I was a four-time loser before I realized I was in the wrong game. When I was in prison, I used to have occasionally a hopeful thought or a dream. It was that, hey, wow, what if I got through all this and figured this all out and uh, could get out and make something cool happen, you know? Wow, I didn't even know I was a dreamer. And here I am. This journey you can't make up. I mean, this, this stuff, you, you, you couldn't write a script to this, and yet here you are living it and breathing it. I remember being in prison late at night thinking, okay, things are really bad. If I ever get out of this, I'm gonna have a story to tell. This was the face of crime. Back then, uh, burglary, armed robbery, drug dealing, police beating up. Rumor is that you did a little time. Yes, like 15 years. I'd love to go back to when it all started. My dad was a pioneer in the healthy bread industry. He worked like a maniac, and he created sprouted wheat breads that are still popular today. My mom and my big brother worked hard as well, doing things the old-fashioned way. As a youth, your dad, and he's a pioneer, he's doing breads that, that no one had thought of, and things started going sideways for you. What happened? I didn't have a whole lot of appreciation for what my dad was doing in those days. It was, I, I kind of wanted to be more like everybody else. Coming from where I came from, I was just born to be different. Dave's father baked bread. I thought it was a sissy. And Dave hated him. So he turned to a needle for relief. I used to enjoy getting high on meth, right? Dave spent the next two decades in and out of jail. Burglary, armed robbery, assault. Focused on how I could be a better criminal. And finally, drugs. In 1997, Dave got arrested five times in three counties. More than a pound of meth landed him at Snake River. Dave thought his life was over. I was just really thinking hard on what, how I could kill myself. I finally discovered the humility to go and talk to a doctor. And the doctor basically, you know, I told him what was up and he gave me some pills. I'd always avoided this because I didn't want to be the guy in the med line. I didn't want to be weak like that, but you know, I, when you got something wrong with you, you got to get it fixed, you know? It's not being weak, it's stronger. It's stronger to have humility, have enough humility to, to do what you have to do to get right. As I started taking this depression medication, um, I started focusing and being able to concentrate more. I started finding that I could play guitar better. I studied CAD CAM, computer-aided drafting. It was really an eye-opener for me. I remember when uh, he called me from prison and he was hinting that he'd like to come back. I had been recognizing some, some differences, some things that were different in the way he was talking, the way he was taking responsibility for himself. And I loved him and I wanted him back. I wanted that creativity. I wanted, uh, I wanted all those things that uh, I felt like we had missed as brothers for so many years. My dad, you know, gave him another chance. He easily could have said, sorry, you've burnt me too many times. I'm not gonna take you back. But he welcomed him back with open arms and that was really the genesis of the whole thing the reuniting of the family and having everything come back together like that. After all those years behind bars, in, out, in, out, you got it together, you walk off that bus, and here you are today. What hits you the most? What keeps you humble? What keeps you grounded? There's a lot of work I still got to do, you know. The last few years I was in prison, I was a drafter, and that's what I wanted to do. It was a very simple um, existence. It was like a, a a focused existence where I was learning every day, I was learning something and creating something. And that's what um, I, I need to focus on that and not say, oh man, you're, you're so cool, you, you did all this, you know. No, it's not that. I have to be this guy going forward who is doing better all the time. The success of Dave's Killer Bread was really just how much he put himself into it. That's what he did for the first couple of years. That's pretty much all he did. If you'd have been there at the first farmer's market, you would have known. It was unbelievable. There was Dave's Killer Bread booth, manned by my son and Dave. We knew we had a hit the first day we launched it at the farmer's market. We, I was hawking the bread, yelling, come try the killer bread, gotta try the killer bread, get a free sample of your killer bread. And uh, you know, people would come up to the booth like, killer bread, what the heck is this guy yelling about? And they'd take a sample of it and they'd be like, damn, this is the best bread I've ever had. 
And, you know, once we had enough people tell us that, that's when we knew we had a hit. We knew we had a great loaf of bread. So in less than a year's time, he's taken it from concept to recipe to store shelves. Dave's Killer Bread. Well, Lamb of Wheat called it the best bread in Portland. Just say no, it's bread on the ground. <laughs> we gotta learn by now, not to worry about the real how. Dave's the next big thing. Do you like Dave's Killer Bread? Yeah. Alone. Just couldn't hardly be any better. In 2005, we had roughly 30 something employees. Over the next six years, we grew into now having over 250 employees and making 2,700 loaves of bread per hour, nearly 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Good friends of mine. Yeah. So you've been customers of Dave's for how long? Well, we were the first ones, I think. Yeah, the first really? Day, probably, really? When he first opened up the market here. Wow. We got him into his first commercial star, Food Front Co-op. And they always appreciated, uh, you know, that I turned my life around, and I, they always gave me a lot of support for that too. So. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we have a great a deal of admiration for what he's done and the courage it took to do it. Thank you. And, it's very significant. Having redeemed himself and having become a successful businessman, Dave knew if he could change, others could too. One third of Dave's workforce is made up of fellow ex-cons. This place saved my life without a doubt, a hundred percent. And Oregon in Ethics Business Award for 2011 is Dave's Killer Bread. long after we moved in here, I, um, I remember standing back in the, uh, in the storeroom and looking at all the ingredients and um, feeling like my dad's you know, spirit, if you will, how much I wished he could be there to see this. I, I know he would have been really excited by the whole thing. He would have been excited about what Dave t has done. He worried about Dave, just like we all did. He had been very, very happy that Dave had found his way out of the lifestyle he was in. So. I know he would have uh, would have enjoyed seeing all of this. I came around and, and realized that my dad was doing the best he could, you know, and, and that what really matters in life, my dad wasn't all that bad, you know, and he was actually a pretty good guy. And I can learn a lot from him. Years ago, Dave Dahl sat in a cell in this very prison. When Dave walked out of here in late 2003, he thought he'd never return. His success has led Dave back to the location of his last incarceration for the first time. As his company grew larger and his mind grew straighter, he realized he could improve the felons he used to be, one loaf at a time. It's kind of surreal now. 
you know, it's just getting closer to the gate. It's kind of, you know, I never, never foresaw this. The story. Here it is. It's hard to tell. Just like most things, hard felt. No more pretending. They'll be happy endings. It's funny and it's sad. The story is both good and bad. It's the truth and it's a lie. It's the story of my life. It's funny. The story is both good and bad yeah, It's the truth and that's a lie It's the story of my life It's the story of my life I believe in accountability tough love. It's the way I look at people coming out of prison. They have to be eager to learn. They have to be humble. What are people doing with their lives? I've learned to accept that opportunity and make the most of it. Good seeds aren't just cute little flax seeds with halos. We really can make the world a better place. One loaf of bread at a time. That's cool. You see, gotta learn by now Not to worry about the way or how But it keeps trying to maintain And I don't know why And it keeps trying Things to see, and that could be anything.